Alright guys, in this video I'm going to show how to install the Nextcloud plugin and also some some tips related to installing it. Um, it just uh, a lot of people will hit and have issues with, so I'll just I'll go over that. Um, so this this plugin I, I finished about a week ago, put it in the free NAS repo. Um, it installs Nextcloud. Um, it's it's very similar to the old own cloud plugin. Um, does the same exact thing except this one uses. MySQL as the database backend, so just do keep that in mind. Um, that means you're going to have much better performance, but you are going to use like about a, a gigabyte of RAM. Um, I think MySQL uses about that. You can always go in there and tune um, the MySQL settings. Uh, I think it's it's in your um, etc directory in the jail. Um, so uh, that's just something to keep in mind. It's going to use more memory, but it's it's going to be optimal performance. Using SQLite um, isn't recommended uh, for the last few versions of OwnCloud and for, since Nextcloud's been around. Um, SQLite is more just like for testing and stuff. Um, people do run systems on that, but if you were going to run like a production uh, Nextcloud or OwnCloud um, instance, you should be using MySQL. So, all right, I'm going to show it real quick. Um, so it's in the repo so you can just go here click install this is gonna download and install the plugin into its own jail so I'll go ahead and do that alright I'm also uh, during this video I'll show um, how to add storage to the jail that Nextcloud's installed to. So one thing that a lot of people try to do is they try to access files um, from OwnCloud or Nextcloud. Um, and there's a specific way you should be doing it. A lot of people will just mount it over where Nextcloud would normally have its files and that's not the correct way to do it because Nextcloud expects that any changes to its data directory it made those changes or it's going through the Nextcloud um, interface or just through Nextcloud itself through the through its own code um, so you what you really want to be doing is if if you are adding storage in a different way is you want to be using the um, I think it's the external mount uh, I think they call it app in, in, in Nextcloud I'll try to say Nextcloud from now on since there's two different projects here but I'm showing Nextcloud in this instance okay so um, I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit um, now that it's installed okay so you can already see there's some issues here you can see on the left these things are isn't refreshing and that's because my system has multiple network interfaces uh, and even if you don't sometimes people do have issues so whenever I install a plug-in jail um, it doesn't have networking working because vImage won't work if you have two network inter interfaces so this is what I do I go in here I disable the image for that jail and I assign it a proper network interface. So that's the network interface that can uh, connect to basically the internet to my network. The other network interface is like a, um, it's like a special network inside my, uh, uh, inside of my house that can't connect to anything except one other um, server. So I just assigned it, but that's still not good enough. You still have to refresh that jail. So now it's gonna, it's gonna um, have working networking. So Let's see, wait for this to finish up. Um, and then you'll see, you didn't see the Nextcloud icon there because it couldn't connect to that plugin jail. Now it can, so now networking is working. So I went in there, I disabled vImage, assigned an interface, and then restarted that jail. Um, and if you installed Nextcloud from the repo, it should be called the Nextcloud underscore one. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and start it. So whenever you install a plugin, you'll need to enable it here. So this will enable it and it'll start from whenever your system boots. So now you can click on the next slide icon on the left. You can click here. If you wanna use HTTPS, you can click here, but it uses its own self-signed certificate. So you'll get errors from this. You could replace the certificate if you want, but I'm just gonna use uh, HTTP. So now you, you create your admin user. Uh, I'll just name it admin. I'll make the password simple so I mean obviously you set your username there and um, here's the next cloud interface so in all essence you're pretty much done at this point there's a lot of tweaking you could do um, but next cloud is installed um, it's running pretty much how 99% of users would want to use it um, 
well also, also the storage thing but yeah you can see it's it's working um let's see server server info what it actually shows here i don't get why all these things always want to have these kind of info pages it's kind of redundant how you have one for your server you have one for your applications it's kind of annoying um okay so here's one one bad side of the plugins for freenas 9 um because of the way uh, they're built using the PBI system, it's pretty difficult to use an up-to-date ports tree. So some things are out of date, like this PHP is pretty old, 5.5, MySQL database 5.5. Um, I could make them newer, but it would just be a ton of work to try to get my port system working and build it as a PBI. It's something I posted about on, on the Freenas forums before, but. Anyway, that is one reason you might want to install Nextcloud from source. I, there's a guide that I wrote as well for OwnCloud, and you could modify it for Nextcloud in the FreeNest forums. So if you want to install it by source, I think I also have a YouTube video on that. Um, it was focused on OwnCloud, but you could there's only you only have to change like a couple lines, and it's essentially the same thing for Nextcloud. So that's one bad si thing about using the plugin is it's going to use pretty old dependencies. Uh, but I did try to update the things that are important, like the actual application itself. Uh, any dependencies that are needed, like um, some people want to use the the S the Samba client, um, the PHP Samba client, which has like the best performance for any Samba client, and I use uh, I add that. So so um, there you go. That's Nextcloud. You can do anything else that you could do. Go watch another YouTube video about Nextcloud if you want. You're interested in how to actually use it. Um, now I'm going to add storage to it. So I'm going to click on my jails. Pick the next cloud jail, click this little box. Oh wait, no, not that one. This this one adds storage. Um, I'm gonna add my media data set. Uh, let's just add videos. Okay. And then in here, now the next cloud plugin uses forward slash media right here as its data directory. I really do not recommend you mount your thing there because it's using that and it puts its files there and it has metadata there and you really don't want to be messing with it. So I recommend you put it somewhere else. Um, let's, I'm going to call it mount, uh, uh, to not, to make things not complicated. I'll call it videos as well. So my videos here, I'm mounting here. So this could also be a share. I mean, this actually is an, an NFS share in my case, uh, but it could be a Samba share. That's what most people use. So there, I have it there. So now that share should be available in my jail. Now, how am I going to access that from Nextcloud? So you want to click on apps. Uh, it's going to be not enabled and you're going to click on external storage support. You're going to enable it. You're going to click on admin, uh, external storage. Um, let's see how I do this. Um, so I'm going to use local. So this is for the best possible performance. Um, let's just call it videos, folder name videos, configuration. I think I put it at mount videos. And that's it. Now I think let's make it available to, I think by default it's all users. All users type, type to select. So by default it's going to be for all users. Um, you could make it specific to a user. You can make a group and make it specific to that group. You can put multiple groups or multiple users. You can do anything you want. All right, so now you can see that this is actually available here. All my videos are now available. I could download them. Um, if you need to actually write to that folder, then you need to make sure that the www user in the jail has access to that. It's UID 80. So check on the forums if you need actual write access. In this case, I'm just going to show how you can access the files, read access, and there it is. Um, these are pretty large files, so it might be difficult to actually do anything with them. Um, you, you can see it would download it. Um, I mean, it actually downloads pretty fast because it's all local, but there you go. Let's just uh, double check, make sure it actually runs. There you go. It opened on my other window, so there you go. It just downloaded the the movie file right there. So that's how you would add storage. And, and the reason you want to add storage that way and not just overwrite your media data set is because OwnCloud expects that any changes in the data directory 
um, it's controlling. So if there's anything that changes, it's not going to rescan that folder because and it won't notice the changes. If you delete files, it won't notice it and it'll still have an index in here. So you really want it like that. Um, and let me go back to here. I think, yeah, you can click on these settings and you can check for changes. So this is, you know, exactly what I, why I'm saying that it'll check once every direct access. So every time I'm, I'm clicking on this in the web interface, it's checking for changes. So it's going to notice changes because it assumes that this, this folder could actually be written to from a share from just, you know, the command line, it's making different assumptions than it's the, the data directory, which in this case is forward slash media. So you do not want to mount to forward slash media. You want to mount to a different location. And then you want to use the, you want to go to apps. You want to use, uh, enable the external storage. And then you want to, um, mount that on the admin over here. Click external storage and mount that. I think there should be a way to put this at your root. I'm not exactly sure though. So, um, that might be another thing people want to try. If, if they want all of their files essentially to be a share, you might be able to just put root here. I don't know though. I, I honestly haven't tried it myself. Let's try this. Uh, I guess not. So I think people might have complained about that. Oh, what the? Oh, because I put root. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. Yeah, it's going to say root. So. So there might not be a way to make it all your files, but you can make a specific folder. If you do want to make it all your files, that's not a free and specific problem. So I would ask on the own cloud or next cloud forums. Um, so anyway, that's my video. I uh, hope it didn't go too long, but I just wanted to show some stuff that people might be interested in. So that's the next cloud plugin installed on free NAS. I'll see you guys later.